Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Mighty Joe, man, We've got the Texas Tech hoop season opener coming up. That's why we're here in front of the USA. What do you think about all that? Well, you know how I feel about it. I'm ready. I'm ready for basketball season as soon as it ends. So, so we're ready to go, no doubt. Absolutely. And just on a side note, uh, it was announced Wednesday that um, basically it was a huge gift, $10 million gift towards Texas Tech's basketball standalone basketball facility. There was some some of the like the renderings um, and the plans released. Gorgeous. It looks awesome. So the hope is that they're going to get all the funds by the. Um, I believe by the end of the summer, and then they can start breaking break ground shortly after that. So they're about 12, they're about a little over halfway towards getting all the money for that facility. So congratulations. So thank you to the Womble family for that tremendous, tremendous gift uh, of $10 million towards the basketball facility. All right, Joe, first question comes from Raider Powers. Uh, it is, it states, are the fans and posters here just throwing out random thoughts about Kingsbury's future with this team, or is there some indication that he is gone at season's end? Now, I've heard from several people that supposedly, and this is, isn't just been what's been posted on the site, um, but from several people that basically the writing's on the wall, that yes, there is a way for him, If I mean, if they run the table, that yeah, okay, I think, I think everybody wants to stay Stan Pat. I think everybody, despite some of the results, uh, everybody would like things to just continue on, I guess, as they are, or give Kingsbury another shot. But no, um, if things don't turn away or turn around right now, there's already been talks about, yeah, that Kingsbury will step down. So um, that's where, and that's where we're at right now. It's not just, I think. Bottom line is, it's not that one person's right and one person's wrong. And there's a couple of people that I've seen post from like that. That's not what I've heard at all. But as far as him still being able to earn his or keep his job, yeah. But it would take the miraculous, a miraculous turnaround. Um, but things are already. I've heard. I've heard of talks. I haven't talked with Kirby Hokett about it, but I've heard with good sources that things are. The motion's rolling. The ball is rolling on that as far as replacing Kingsbury. All right, Cobonis wants to know what is Baylor's biggest uh, or best matchup with Texas Tech and where will Baylor struggle the most against Texas Tech? Yeah, I think, uh, well, I'll just go with Tech's best situation first. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Baylor's offensive line hadn't been real great in pass protection. Yeah. Uh, they've been giving up a lot of pressure, a lot of sacks. Uh, I think it potentially could be a pretty big day for Eli Howard, uh, Colin Hill when he gets back in the second half, uh, and Tony Jones and those I guys. Colin Mike Hill. Colin Hill might actually get to play the whole game because he was out the first half. Oh, okay. So he's supposed to be able to play the whole game. Okay. That well then good. Then, good. Uh, then that's, yeah. I mean those guys are going to have an opportunity uh, in this one. Uh, and big Mike uh, yeah, big Mike inside. Sure. Uh, so uh, you know I think uh, you got that going for Tech. But on the other hand. Uh, I think maybe one thing uh, that Baylor does pretty well is, is, is they pass the ball okay. Yeah. I mean, they're not they're not great, but they're by Big 12 standards. But they can sling it around a little bit. And with Tech's struggles uh, in pass coverage, it's not out of the question that they could kind of march it up and down the field and put some points on the board. And so that's why that matchup with uh, Tech's DEs and, and, and Mike yeah. up against that uh, pass blocking offensive line is going to be such a big one. You get the pressure, uh, you cut down on a lot of that pass efficiency, uh, and then Baylor's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, I agree, Joe. I think that's where Baylor has their biggest advantage, too. Uh, even though it's a true freshman, Charlie Brewer, I mean, he's one of the most prolific high school um, quarterbacks in Texas football history. So, uh, And obviously we know he's got some family chops, Michael Brewer, you know, being the younger brother of Michael Brewer. Uh, they, I believe they're fifth in the Big 12 in passing, about 280 yards per game. Um, and like you said, we know tech struggles. So I expect them to have some success. They have, you know, Mims on the outside. He's a great athlete. Uh, they're they're going to move the ball some there through the air. But as far as where they don't have a very good or where Tech has an advantage, I'll say, uh, is just period in the running game. Uh, they're not very. They're the worst in the Big 12 uh, against the run. Let's say I actually jotted down. They give up over 200 yards, 207 yards a game on the ground. Um, and but then also they don't produce a lot of. Uh, you know, yards on the ground either. Uh, they're eighth in rush rush offense with 121 yards uh, on average per game. So, I mean, that is set up for Tech to dominate the line of scrimmage as far as the running game, which sounds really weird to say, but that's the way it looks like. Now, what's weird about that, Joe, is that I, 
what they say or what Matt Rule says he wants to do is really instill a team that can stop the run and run the ball. But that's they're not there yet. They're not here there in, in year one. Easy DZ 4S says, uh, does Gibbs system require DB to stay four yards away from the receiver when it covers? I mean, this is in jest, but I mean, that's what it appears. I know sometimes it looks that way. Basically, yeah, your problem right now is you got personnel problems at, at, at cornerback. Uh, you got Demarcus Fields, who's legit. Yeah. And he's going to be very, very good. Uh, but then, I mean, you got Octavius and Jalen Lane. They're inconsistent right Des now. Smith. You just and, and the deal with Des Smith, I'm just not sure where he fits in. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know if he's got the coverage chops yeah. uh, anywhere but, uh, in, in the secondary. But he's uh, as maybe the best open field tackler on the, on the team. team yeah. You know, I mean, so you kind of want him on the field for that uh, ability. Uh, and I kind of wonder if it's six foot two, maybe you pack on. 15, 20 pounds on him and make him an outside linebacker or Maybe something, so, yeah. you know, that may be his, his ultimate position. But right now, uh, cornerback is an issue. I mean, uh, people will stay away from DeMarcus and go after those other guys. And yeah, you're talking four yards, uh, sometimes worse than that. All right, Mr. Mustafa Mon has a basketball question. So there you go. In a nine-man rotation, who are your players? You have the five seniors, Odiasi, Culver. Well, there's more seniors than that. But uh, you have Culver. Oh, yeah, the five seniors and then Odiasi, Culver, uh, Zaire Smith and who else? Yeah, I think that nine is right, or that That's eight. eight. That eight yeah. is right. And then I, I would probably at this point I would throw in Brandon Francis is the most yeah, likely yeah. guy. But the one guy that I'm interested in seeing, and I don't know if it's going to happen now, is Hyron Edwards because he's the true yeah. point guard type of a, the only absolute pure point guard on the team. But he's had the concussion issues, yeah. and I don't know how much that's going to set him back if he's too far behind to, to really pick up and be a factor or not. Maybe not. Maybe not if he can come back very quickly. Uh, but I would like to see him be able to get into that rotation at some point. But it's kind of a crowded deal. It really is. Uh, there's a lot of competition. Yeah. Uh, for me, Francis would be my first answer. But, you know, I really want to see what Morrill can do eventually. And you, then you got to throw in uh, – Josh Webster too, you know, he's going to get some minutes. He has some ability there. So, like you said, a lot of competition for, for those minutes. All right, Dinsby wants to know what part of the football team are we most proud of? Defensive line still for me. Uh, I mean, uh, I know they, there's been a little bit of fall off here late, but that's not all on them. I mean, they just, as the offensive support has waned, then they're you know, problems have increased on the defensive line, but it's still yeah. a good defensive line. I mean, it's, it's still uh, one, a unit that can really bring some pressure as it did against Kansas State. Uh, and uh, you've got a lot of bunch of pieces, a lot of pieces there, uh, and a guys that play hard mm -hmm. on a regular yeah. basis. Uh, so uh, that's that's a good group, and, and I'm proud of them uh, for, for the whole season, really. Yeah, I think that's my main thing is that you've had major malfunctions, or let's be honest, people choke at the coaching position at the quarterback position, at the kicking position. That's not a good combination for when you're in, you know, crunch time. Uh, but at a lot of other positions, you've had guys that have played really hard and at high levels. Um, I mean, like Jack Anderson is a true freshman. He's looked really good. I think Dylan Cantrell, when given the opportunity, he's been very good. I, I, I really feel bad for him, honestly, because I feel like his talent's been wasted with pretty much any other quarterback that's been through here in any other situation since I can remember, back since I can remember, he would have had one of the really very good seasons as a receiver uh, at Texas Tech, which is saying a lot. You got the Kiki QT. Trey King has stepped up. Uh, Stockton, before he got injured, was playing just really hard. The whole defensive line, like you said. Dakota Allen, stellar the entire season, really. Um, and then, you know, Jay Sean's done his thing, so he's had a much better year than he did last year. Um, so uh, there are guys that are, that are really playing hard, and that's who you want to see get – you know, get a win uh, this week at uh, Jerry World against Baylor. Red Raider grad says, how do we feel the likely dismissal ending to the season uh, will affect recruiting leading up to the early signing period? What effect does a likely Kingsbury fi firing have on keeping the current recruiting class together? Well, as far as the early signing period, man, I have no idea because this is uncharted territory, man. I feel like we're in uh, Star Trek, like the Enterprise or something, you know, because uh, no one, I mean, everybody can speculate all you want, but you don't really know until you do it. It's so weird. Uh, we've never had this early signing period in December. So I think there's gonna be a lot of unintended consequences of that. And until we go through a cycle, I, honestly, I'm just speculating. I think it could go in a, in a million different ways. If you get a new coach and it's an exciting hire, 
as far as the fan base really gets excited, makes a lot of noise, then you can get a coach pump and actually get a couple of guys there right in that early signing period. And then parlay that into spring, uh, you know, in February, and then boom, I mean, it could be really nice. To answer your second question, absolutely. I mean, anytime you have coaching strife, your team's struggling, and then eventually, as we were expecting uh, a coaching replacement, it does affect recruiting, and the recruiting class is going to change some. Now, um, honestly, I, the, the recruiting class is going to change some anyway. Um, there are some changes coming to it. Uh, this has been a volatile class from the from the from the onset. I mean, there will be probably at least around t ten to a dozen decommits by the time this cycle is over, which is unbelievable. I mean, I, I don't know what that is against the national average, but it's off the charts. Um, and that was before, I mean, we had decommits before the season started. And then um, just the, the way the season's gone now, uh, I, there's just going to be a lot of movement with the guys you have. So, and I fully expect, depending on who comes in or whatever, there to be that much more.